Okay, so I guess we can go on to this 26th Packer Lane Grinder pump. No, we haven't uh, voted on the issue. minutes. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, we did vote we did. on the minutes. We did? I no, we, yes. Yeah. You, you seconded. You, we didn't. All right. Uh, we took a vote and everybody said aye. <laughs> I recall that. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, Greg, I guess you'll go over this. Um, yeah, the Packer Lane Grinder Pump, sure. Yeah. Um, just a little background here on this. Um, there's Packer Lane, it's off of Irving Street and Mystic. Um, it's kind of downhill from Irving Street. And uh, the only way to sewer these houses is uh, by a low pressure system with uh, grinder pumps. There's three lots on Packer Lane. Um, two of the lots had existing homes uh, going way back probably long before the sewers went ever went in at Irving Street. And then there was an empty lot. Um, in 2000, a person built a home on this empty lot and he wanted to connect a sewer. Um, but the only way he could do it was to put in a low pressure system and a grinder pump. So we, the town designed the system for him. He paid to put it in. We inspected it, tested it and accepted it back in 2000. At the time, uh, this fellow put his own private grinder pump in, not a town supplied grinder pump. I'm not really sure of the reason for that, but that's what he went ahead and did. Um, and that was back in 2000. Just recently, I'm gonna say maybe a year or so ago, um, it, 19 Packer Lane, which is one of the existing houses, they had a septic failure and they wanted to tie in to that low pressure line. Um, so the town supplied 19 with a grinder pump, the town supplied grinder pump and put, you know, paid and put that in. Um, just recently, uh, the homeowner at 26, it was a different one that who built the house. Um, uh, 26 is the uh, house that was put in in 2000 uh, and also paid to put in the, the line, their grinder pump failed. Um, there was some records, I think, in the building department and also at the treatment plant that showed this as a private grinder pump. So um, we didn't go out and fix it for this homeowner. And they went ahead because they had no sewer service. They went ahead and paid a plumber to come and basically replace the pump and fix this grinder pump. Um, she called up bunch of people call myself we had a long discussion um and you know in in reviewing the situation i felt that since um you know they the previous owner paid to put this line in a town line um the other two properties basically got a free sewer they were and we were going to supply them with a grinder pump that you know by rights um this lot also should have been a town grinder pump back in 2000 um, so are you saying three pumps or there was there's one but you're thinking of three yeah there's still one okay. lot left that's on septic at 31 um and in the future you know whenever their system fails we would give them a town owned grinder pump um so that's kind of where it stands um she did submit the bill that she got from her plumber which i think you all got in the package there um you know i said i'm not authorized to approve that it's really the sewer authority has to approve that. And, you know, it's really up to you guys, if you want to approve that. Um, I did issue a memo to uh, Harry and the building official, you know, saying that, you know, I would consider that the three lots on Packer Lane should be all, you know, considered town owned grinder pumps because it is a town sewer. It's the only, um, you know, really way to sewer these lots. Um, and two of the three houses were existing at the time. So, so what he should have done was call the town in the first place and had us do the whole thing. They did, but our records showed that it was private, so we didn't go out and do it. Oh, well, why? I, I, I don't understand. Why, why, why would the records showing it's private make a difference? Because at the time it was put in back in 2000, for whatever reason, it was... Uh, you know, put in and the records were put in as it was a private pump because this guy paid for it himself. It's, you know, it wasn't the town that put this in. So, so basically he gave us a, a pump for free that we should have paid for it back then. Yeah. Yes, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> so it sounds to me like it makes sense now that, you know, going that 
from here on going forward, those pumps should uh, be town pumps and, and that we should reimburse the this homeowner who just replaced the pump through the confusion in the town records. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, move, move we do that or whatever. That so, sounds reasonable to me. I just want, uh, can we make sure that the records are, are changed to reflect the current understanding so that it doesn't happen again? Yeah, we'll make sure that happens. Okay. So it sounds like, if I understand correctly, Greg, we need a motion to uh, what reimburse the homeowner at 26? Yep. Okay, I so, move that we reimburse the homeowner and uh, correct the records. So a second. Okay, so we have a motion from Dave and the second from John. And so all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so that's passed unanimously. Great. <laughs> um, let's see, we'll move on to reports. I don't think we have any consultant reports, changes to sewer line attorney's report. So I assume we're up to public works director's report, um, Greg, but you can correct me if any of the earlier ones are needed. Yeah, no, we don't need anything in the earlier stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just had a couple items. Um, uh, the first is the, the operations supervisor that we just hired. I don't know, a couple months ago, um, it was, you know, after a couple months, it was pretty obvious that his skill set was not going to align with the requirements of uh, what we're looking for for a operations supervisor. So uh, that individual no longer works for the for the town. Um, so we're back out again to advertise that's, for an operations supervisor. That's Mark Michael Garrity was the guy, right? Yeah, is correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well. Oh boy. Yep. So Harry's got his hands full again to <laughs> the operation <laughs> supervisor and run the whole is show they, down there. Is the supply of, of qualified people really uh, not adequate to the demand uh, nationwide or whatever? Uh, I don't know if you want to um, answer, Harry. I would say yes, but I'll let you. Yeah, it, it, that's probably the case. I mean, I think in Connecticut, there's. Um, you know, barely enough operators. So I would think that would extend to the supervisors also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh boy. So we, uh, we're we managing in the interim, I, guess, I hope. Oh yeah, we are. We have, we're all picking up the slack. Um, I do recall last time we were out, went out, we were out, we posted like four times, I think, Greg, before we- Yeah, something like even, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh boy, okay. So hopefully um, we'll get somebody soon. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got a, uh, a notice from the uh, engineer working with uh, EB on the outfall truncation project. They're originally gonna do that starting um, this month, but now they've pushed it back to start the middle of January. So it's been pushed back a month. It doesn't really impact us too much. Mm -hmm. um, that's about all I had. Okay. Um, anybody have we, any more questions or we'll... Are we going to talk about the beard and the cheese people? Um, yeah, I'll let Harry, you know, maybe he can cover that. Um, sure. His uh, um, facility report. Okay, you want to go, go through the monthly report first and then... Uh... Sure, oh, or that, that makes sense, Harry. Okay. So, um, so for November, we um, we did pretty well. We met uh, met all our permit requirements. Um, we nitrified pretty well. We uh, we, uh, we averaged 112 pounds per day, where our limit is 153. Um, even though we're doing well now, though, we still had those that issue in the spring. So we're we're 90% sure we'll be over our limit for the year. 
Um, so yeah, our, our pump station projects are proceeding, but uh, the, the, the one that's that we're actually, you know, that's in process of working is, uh, or being worked on, we're running into material delivery issues. Um, not so much yet on the uh, gravel street pump station. That one is, is just, uh, just getting into its work phase. Uh, but we'll probably be seeing the same issues there. Mumford Cove is um, in design. Its upgrade is in design right now, as is the lab uh, renovation. Um, this, all the data, the historical data is there for you if you have any questions about that. Um, it's pretty, pretty typical month. So the one question I had was, I, I noticed the, you have the heading consumer data and that there were, you know, 79 calls before you dig markets, including 11 emergencies. And so yes. I, I, I'm just wondering what constitutes an emergency and uh, I, I look back just well, at last month and there were all there were far fewer emergencies last month, but right. Okay, so so the, when you do when a contractor calls in a call before you dig, we have two full days, not including weekends or holidays, to go out and mark the location of the sewer. So if you have a situation, say um, a car hits a utility pole and CLMP's got to go put in a new pole they'll call in an emergency call in where we would respond right away and mark out the sewer. But the other thing, and, and I think is what you see in this part of the season where contractors need to get their jobs done and may not want to wait the two days for us to mark them out, they'll call them in as an emergency sometimes. Oh. Um, so it just means we have to mark them out, you know, right away or that day that they, we we know who they are, and I mean we you know we call them and say okay we'll be out later today. It's not like we have to rush right out and do them. We don't do them on overtime or you know midnight call-ins and that sort of thing. Um, so that that probably contributes. You know we probably do about three real emergencies a month. Um, so I would say seven or eight of these em emergencies this month were really contractor planning issues. Um, but they are considered emergencies, so. But there's there's no financial impact. No, no. I mean, if, if they expected us to go out at midnight and do it, yes, there would be. But we don't do that. You know, that we have their we have the contractors' numbers in the paperwork, so we can call them and talk to them about what's going on. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so it's it's not a. Uh, creating major problems for you all. No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make sure because obviously, if there were eleven real emergencies, those could be any right. time of day, any day of the week, et cetera. Yeah. No, I understand. That's uh, yeah. But uh, there is a real emergency on the weekend, like you described. You know somebody crashes into a phone, you know, and something like that, um, then do you deal with it on the weekend or it still yes, waits we do, till Monday? We do because legally in an emergency, the contractor can actually start working right away. He doesn't actually have to wait for us to come on to a mark out. And the logic behind that is say they hit a gas main, you know, they don't want to wait until we show up and say, here's our sewer, they're going to start digging but in doing so they accept the responsibility if something happens so when we get particularly when we get an emer emergency in the middle of the night or something like an emergency like that we'll look it up right away on the computer and call the contractor and say you know yes i think you know i see the pole where you're working and there's no sewer within 25 feet of it so we'll come out and mark it out but you know you're not in any danger of hitting a sewer so it's all okay. about communication you know so Great, thank you. I was just curious. By the yeah. way, are, are, is our are our records entirely complete, including all the uh, you know 
things that might have been ha happened years ago. Are we in good shape there? As far as the sewer? As far as, as like well, as far as everything, the sewer and the water and everything. Um, yes, we we have uh, we have good maps on our sewers. Um, it's, it's quite complete. Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some errors, and we'll find uh, you know, maybe some missing stuff. But uh, we're we're in really good shape compared to the prior two places I worked. I think we're in really good shape. <laughs> we don't. There aren't any uh, uh, leftover uh, septic system lines or anything like that that we ever run into? Um, there may be, but if there are, I mean, there's no no issue with it, no damage. Um, so yeah, pr contractors probably do abandon the lines uh, when they mm -hmm. convert. I know they have to fill in the septic systems, but they may abandon the lines and the leaching fields. Uh, you know, I, I've talked to people on the phone who are looking for information about the sewer. I direct them to our GIS system, and uh, and they're very impressed by our GIS system and the level of information that it provides. Um, so we get some good compliments on that. <clears throat> Great. Okay. So I guess uh, Dave wanted an update on uh, beard and cheese. <laughs> Um, so, so well, maybe we, uh, you wanted we, samples. <laughs> that would, well, we, that we, would we do. Actually, we actually did go out um, this past month. We were starting to do some samples to see what's going on. Um, we've gotten the data back from two of the samples. And unfortunately, one of them, one of them shows pretty much consistent with what they were doing when the when the problem was originally noted and the second one was actually higher um, so we've still got some more sample data that we're waiting for the lab to complete their testing um, but that's that's where we're at so one one problem is uh, no change and the other is we don't know is that fair well, right. I, I mean, I, I unfortunately, I'm thinking that looking at the data, um, there's there's not a change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Our, you know, I mean, I, hopefully, hopefully, maybe with some other data that's that's still out at the lab, maybe that'll change. Yeah, I I'm not sure. I, I've asked the question before, and I'm not sure I understood the answer. Are we? Are we carrying them to any extent? Are they paying their fair share, or uh, how, how's what's what's the story on that? Hmm. Um, I don't have don't have any billing information on that tonight. Uh, I'm I'm not sure what their billing is. So we're not sure whether they're putting more. Uh, bad stuff into the lines than we know about or than we than they should um yeah i mean like i say i don't know what they're what the amounts they're paying monthly are, are. Hmm. um you're not particularly concerned about it i gather well no i mean i am i follow the the you know i'm trying to follow the the numbers and trying to work with them on getting their system improved um but you know the tax department does the billing i'm not and like i said i didn't collect the numbers for that tonight mm. okay so it sounds like um you're likely to have the full set of data for our next meeting in january yes and okay. um and I guess my understanding was that they were being billed currently based on water usage rates. And and the question then would be whether there should be some additional charges due to the content of what they were releasing. Um, so I don't know, you think we'd be prepared to discuss all of that next month? Yes. <clears throat> yes, I just, uh, unfortunately, I didn't 
think to pull those numbers. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're correct, Hugh. They are just being charged, you know, the normal water rate like any other commercial, and not the industrial surcharge, which is, you know, where we there's a formula that we have for, you know, when they go above certain limits that they get charged extra for. And, um, and we're that's... and we're not tracking that at the moment. Yeah, well, great it's, that the it's... test started. That's there, there, Dave. You... That's what the testing would inform. But Correct. the testing isn't isn't uh, operational yet. Is that right? Well, we 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 collect the tests and then it takes some of the tests take um, five or six plus days to get the uh, lab data uh, for the test to be completed. Um, but you do have some the, results. Uh, you don't. Right, we do. They're not results we we would like to hear, but they're, you've got results. Right. The the the, the two tests. So the two samples that we've collected um, this month that we've gotten complete data from the lab for shows one is consistent with what they were discharging when we originally found the problem, and the other one is, is higher than, than that. And this mm -hmm. is for both of them, or, or one is for one and one is for the other? Well, we, we can't separate their wastewater because they have the okay. two businesses tie into one pipe, I see. and then that discharges to the town. Do they, do they pay separate bills? Yes, they pay separate uh, bills. Huh? Yes, they pay separate bills as two separate water meters. Mm. But um, but whatever bad stuff they may be dumping, there may be a confusion about who's who's done that. Is that true? That's true. Mm. I'm just wondering, do you think they're making, I mean, it seems like this has been going on a long time, or are they making good faith efforts to deal with it, or are they just sort of stalling because they don't want to spend the money? I mean, it, it does seem like it's been going on for quite a while. Yes. Yeah, I, yes, I, I, would, I, I would agree that they, that they are, I mean, they, they are making, or they said they were making some efforts. I mean, and, and they were, and I was a little bit surprised that these samples showed it, you know, being consistent and actually worse than we had before. So um, once we get these other test results back, um, Harry and I are gonna have to have another meeting with both Beard, uh, the owner there and uh, Mystic Cheese and, and start, I think, ramping up the pressure on these guys. Is there any way yeah. to compare notes with whoever it is that is, is your counterpart in Stonington? Because I mean, Beard's been there for years. So they, you know, have they run into this there? I don't know. Might it might well, it be yeah, useful yeah. to talk? Might it be useful to talk to the people in Stonington and see how just how their their reputation is in general? Maybe they're dumping or, or just what their ghost. experience was. I mean, no, no, you know, nothing personal. Just I wonder if they've faced the same challenge there. Hmm. I could do that. Uh, you know, I'm yeah, we'll, we'll reach a, out to I'm them. Trying to be helpful with the idea, not you know. It would, it would, it would, it would build some confidence, perhaps, if they've if they've been up and up there. Right. <clears throat> Oops. Okay. Anything further on this? topic or we're done for now okay i guess we're we're done uh so thanks harry and greg for the reports i don't have a chairman's report and i, I don't believe we have any other business on the agenda is there anything else before we adjourn or make a motion to adjourn i don't want to forget to do that <laughs> <laughs> I move the adjourn. Second. Okay, and I assume we're all in favor. Thank we're you. In favor. Yep. Thank you, and happy right. holidays. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Happy, happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, everybody. Christmas. Merry Christmas and all that. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs> Great. Bye. See you Bye. next year. <laughs> yep. Yeah.